bread. Enjoyed by almost every culture across the world, it is a staple in the human diet. One of these cultures, the Egyptians, nearly 4,000 years ago, were the first people in recorded history to make a special type of bread. Not because they knew what they were doing. They had uh, no idea. But through trial and error, they managed to mix dough with wild yeast and lactic acid bacteria, the ingredients needed for sourdough. Today, sourdough is known for its superior nutrition, acidic taste, and other unique properties compared to normal bread. But what gives sourdough these properties? Can we change these properties through its creation process? Is it possible to produce the perfect bread? To answer this, we need to go back 120 years and explore the history of sourdough microbiology. 1902. Holliger was the first person to establish that sourdough fermentation was accomplished by a family of bacteria known as lactic acid bacteria, or LAB. Further research by Knudsen narrowed the LAB species into subgroups, but it was not until 1959 where the work done by Spicker finally isolated some individual species. For another 40 years, further development in sourdough microbiology remained stagnant. The technology at the time was grueling to use, inefficient and expensive, so new methods needed to be developed. Lo and behold, in 1998, Gerard Meiser, a well-recognized microbiologist, published a paper explaining the application of denaturing gradient gel electrophoresis in microbiology, short for DGGE. For simplicity, I'll refer to it as DG for the rest of the video. He outlined that DG can detect all the different bacterial strains in any body rich in microflora in just one rendition. This was impossible with previous technology, making DG revolutionary in the field of microbiology and especially the sourdough literature. So it was only a matter of time before someone used this technology for sourdough fermentation. And in 2002, Christian Maroth publishes his experiment. Using Miser's guide and previous sourdough microflora literature, Maroth's team investigates, for the first time ever, the microflora of sourdough fermentation using DG. But why is DG so significant for sourdough fermentation? Well, DG is a special type of gel electrophoresis, the difference being that it uses denaturation as its gradient, rather than nucleotide size. I'm sure you're familiar with gel electrophoresis. DNA sequences are separated based on how many nucleotides they have, with the different colored blocks on screen representing different nucleotides, and this is read using a DNA ladder of varying size. DG, however, separates DNA sequences based on the denaturation value and is read using reference strains. And most of the time, the 16S rDNA region is used as a sequence. Since this region of DNA in prokaryotes is responsible for constructing half of the ribosome, which is the organelle that conducts protein synthesis for every single living cell, it has both highly conserved regions, as shown on screen, but it also has a region which is unique for every species, making it perfect for DG. Here's a visual example of what DG might look like. And all you need to know is that there's always going to be a unique spot on the gel for all the different species. So in any body which has a microflora you want to examine, say a sourdough mixture, you first amplify the 16S rDNA region with PCR by using primers specific to the species you think are in the mixture. Put that solution into one of the gel bands, and in one rendition, you can see all the different species in that body of microflora, provided you have the reference strains, of course. That's the power of DG. And with this powerful technology in hand, Maroth's team produced four sourdoughs with differing parameters, such as temperature, different starters for the sourdough, which is what actually contains the LAB, and more, to test how these changes will affect the microflora. After a fixed time, they plated the microflora of the sourdough onto agar plates, waited for the colonies to grow, picked the colonies, and used them in DG. Remember, what I'm showing isn't accurate, it's purely for visualization. But anyway, the efficiency of DG allowed them to test the microflora of the samples at different times, and this was the first time this had been achieved in the history of sourdough literature. Now you might be thinking, why does it matter what type of bacteria are in the sourdough? Who cares what species they are? At the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference. Well. Because they actually do. Because this directly answers our initial questions. It has been proven that different LAB species can change the final product of the sourdough in many different ways. From the shelf life, to how much the dough rises, to the aroma of the bread, the taste, the texture, just to name a few. Every bit of bacteria in the sourdough very slightly changes these properties, and that's what makes this so interesting. For example, 
These LAB have been shown to improve flavor, and it's even been shown recently that certain LAB harbor enzymes which promote nutritional absorption. Who knows what other unique LAB are out there? And that's what all the fuss is about when it comes to sourdough. It's the potential. And Maroth's experiment paved the fundamental concepts for future research on sourdough fermentation. So who knows? Maybe the perfect bread can be a reality someday.